doesn't adore her delicious quince paste, her homemade recipes and that burnt fig ice cream. Maggie Beer is an Australian icon in the food industry. She lives in the gorgeous Barossa Valley, the place where her love of food really blossomed. Now, ahead of her MasterChef Australia appearance, Merrick Watts caught up with Maggie Beer at her home to see what life is really like on the farm. I'm here in the Barossa Valley in South Australia, home of Maggie Beer and Maggie Beer's Pheasant Farm with a restaurant overlooking the beautiful lake. And I'm gonna go and say hello to my old friend now. The crew have told me that she's a massive fan of mine, so this is gonna be pretty great. Hi there, how are you? Um, good, thanks. Um, who are you? I I'm Merrick. Oh, well, um, am I expecting you? You better come in. You lied to me. Maggie, I'm so excited to be in your kitchen at your farm. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure now that I know you. Now, <laughs> 14 years of Pheasant Farm. Did you even slightly envisage what this would become? Oh, absolutely not. You know, I really have to pinch myself because we didn't have a grand plan. The idea was to be farmers and grow pheasants, sell them to restaurants at first. That was the idea, but no one knew how to cook them. It evolved, but who could have planned what's happened? So your idea was let's build a business based around a bird yes. that smells awful but tastes good. <laughs> this cannot fail. <laughs> You're not formally trained, and, no. and I love the fact that you, you don't shy away from that. You say, I'm a cook, yeah, I'm not I'm a chef. I'm a cook, that's right. I inherited an instinct from my father, and I see it in my family. We just know mm -hmm. uh, how to cook. We know how flavours go together without thinking about it. Good food all my life in terms of using the whole of the animal and making brawn and being taught as a very young child how to choose something that was ripe and fresh and that was just part of my childhood growing up in Sydney. Offal is my favourite food in the whole world and I grew up cooking offal from a young child and it's what I love. I eat some offal and I know people don't always enjoy it but the only thing I personally I don't eat is I don't eat brains or balls because I won't eat anything that I think with. So... <laughs> my family, and this is the fanboy moment, this is a bit embarrassing, we're all massive fans of you. And what's lovely is that my children, uh, nine and seven, they love you, they love your products, genuinely. Their favourite product, of course, is the burnt fig and honeycomb <laughs> ice creams. How important is it for children to kind of learn the process of food making? Even one step back, the growing and the cooking. Sharing not only the table, but sharing the process to get it to the table. Every child in Australia should have that chance. Your children have it because you do it. Yep. But it's not nearly yeah. um, uh, prevalent enough. You've been known to work 70 hours a week, <laughs> but you're now starting to take a step back from your work. Yes, well, we have sold the business of Maggie Beer products, but I still stay with them two years, doing the thing I love most, product development. But the farms, this is all the family and yeah. will always be so. Slowing down, I'm working on it. Yeah, so not really, you're not really slowing down. What you're doing is just guiding all your efforts in another direction. That's right. How does your husband Colin feel about that? I get a lot of lectures, <laughs> but I tell him, for once in my life, there is a plan kind of a perfect picnic camper here. Yes, pears, dried pears, bread, cheese. What else do you want? Mmm. I know, they're fantastic. How good's that? So can we go out and have a look at where this stuff comes from? We can indeed. All right, yeah. let's go for a walk. Oh, this is your herb garden. Where do we start? I always had a locust tree in my family home as a kid. The thing about locusts is they're in season in November when virtually no other fruit except for berries yep. are available. I'm just a produce-driven cook. How important is seasonality? You can be a good cook if you just follow the seasons. Maggie, I just 
pick this off one of your quince trees. <laughs> it's massive, isn't it? Yes, this one left behind because it's so big. This is very unusual. You can smell that it's ripe yeah. and it's lost its down, which means it's also ripe. I love quinces. Well, you're famous for quinces because you make a quince paste. Yeah, but once you cook it, it is... Uh, you have to do this. Were you a difficult child? <laughs> Maggie, I recognise this space from last year's MasterChef challenge. Can you imagine? This was turned into the MasterChef kitchen and there must have been a hundred people here. The whole crew was quite something. How would you go with like a MasterChef uh, challenge? Give me a group challenge and I could do anything. But with one-on-one, -on -one, because I did it the first time mm. I ever did the MasterChef, they put me up against someone. It was 60 minutes and something that I could do with my eyes closed, my hands behind my back, and I shook so much. It froze. I froze. Wow. But I won it. <laughs> <laughs> From the Barossa, Maggie Beer. When you appear on MasterChef, you get a kind of rock star entrance where people just lose their minds in reverence. I have to look behind me and see who they're doing it for. It has so often brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> MasterChef, in this season, you've got a challenge that's based yeah. on a literary reference. Yes, Picnic at Hanging Rock. I'd never been there. What an iconic place. It's just amazing. And to have two teams doing picnics for 100 people, can you imagine that? No, I can no. imagine eating the picnics. I can't imagine <laughs> setting it up. It was a tough challenge. When do you harvest olives? Well, in uh, the Barossa, we harvest in May, but it, each season's different. From the 1st of May to the last of May, we've already harvested this. Look at all the olives left. Black on the outside and green inside, which means they're not totally ripe. But if you pick them, half green, half ripe, gives you the best quality oil. Can you eat olives straight off the tree? No. Oh, yeah. I'm oh. going to have a tummy ache. <laughs> What do you love about living and working in the Barossa? It has opened my eyes entirely to the rhythm of the seasons. I have community, I have belonging, I have beauty, and I have produce. Look how happy you are. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing living in a city? <laughs> Maggie, this is just beautiful. Yeah. This is the kind of end of day place that we love. It's like an oasis, I can see why. Yeah. It's just so peaceful. It's just and beautiful. You're it's right. So I think I will go for a swim. <laughs> oh, that was a fantastic story there by Merrick Watts. And Kerry Ann is now waiting for her crate of Maggie Beer quince paste. She's going to hold it. Pate. Oh, pate. Oh. Maggie Beer pate. The crate should arrive. And you love the ice cream. Yep. Give me that burnt. Fig ice cream any day by the Good. bucket. Now, don't miss Maggie Beer on MasterChef Australia for a very special challenge at Picnic at Hanging Rock. That's all happening tonight at 7.30pm on the 10 and Win Network.